Hello, this is Craig. I don't have time to do a software prototype, but I do have time to talk about it. Time travel games. They've always been difficult to make, and I'm talking about a time travel MMO. The biggest problem with a time travel MMO is that if you have a shared time stream, a player will go back in time and screw over another player, so you get a giant pack of time traveling dicks. The way to fix that is to let every player have their own timeline. However, in order for that to happen, you need to have some pretty serious thought as to what timeline actually means. You can certainly say that any given player has their own timeline, but there are a lot of things. You can't say that there is a timeline. You can't say that there is that the player can only interact with other people who share the same timeline. So let me put this in perspective. The time stream has World War II as an event. Now you can let World War II happen, or you can go back and prevent World War II. But either way, the zombie invasion that happens in 1982 happens anyhow. Whether World War II happens or not, the zombie invasion happens. Now let's say you and your buddy are both playing out the zombie invasion, trying to come out, you know, trying to make it come out roses for humanity. One of you has the timeline where World War II happened. The other has the timeline where World War II didn't happen. You're both participating in the same event. You're on the same server, you're shooting at the same enemies, you're tossing each other health packs. But if you talk to each other, you have a very different timeline and your concept of what the world is like, politically, um, may be very, very different. I mean, one of these guys may have Mars colonies, and the other guy may barely, you know, may have been knocked back to the Stone Age by World War III already. So, within a given event, anyone can interact. Uh, if you're all, you know, no matter how different your timelines are, if you have access to an event, then when you go into that event, you are in there with people who have different timelines, radically different timelines. And I'm using World War II because that's a classic, but in reality you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to build off of human off of human history. You'd want to create a new history because it would be very very difficult to come up with a representation of earth history that uh, anyone could agree on. But I will continue using it as an example because what I have proposed is a very uncoupled kind of time stream um, where things happen and it doesn't matter whether events have been turned on or turned off, the next things happen. So, whether World War II happened or not, you still get the zombie invasion. Whether World War II happened, whether the zombie invasion happened, you still get Mars landings, you still get the internet. These events uh, can, be, can be turned on and off independently to customize your timeline as you prefer. But, there are certain threads. For example, if we were to say that World War II led to the uh, creation of the atom bomb, which led to the bombing of Japan, these events can't happen unless World War II happens. So if someone turns World War II off, these events just vanish entirely. You don't even get the option to turn them on. Now, it may be that someone comes in later on and creates a duplicate, ver a duplicate entry point for these events. And so if World War II is off, you still get some kind of crazy event pattern that leads to the same event structure, the same chain of linked events. But by default, this event chain only can happen if, uh, if it's an unbroken chain of events. So it's not that there's no causality. It's that there are specific events which are caused by other specific events, but by and large, each of these is distinct. So the zombie invasion has a bunch of events that happen because of the zombie invasion, and they get turned off if you turn the zombie invasion off, but that doesn't turn off the invention of the internet or whatever else you're doing. This uh, loosely coupled event streams, I guess you could call it, uh, is quite robust, and since each player can turn events on and off as they see fit, that means that they can customize their own time stream without interfering with any of the other players' time streams. Now the question then becomes, well, what's, uh, what's going on? I mean, is it, how is this a game? Well, one of the fun things you can do is you can explore the timelines. Um, the game has to have a time engine. It has to understand what an event does. 
So if you turn certain events on and off, that affects the reality of your current state. And similarly, if you go back in time, then you get what happened with these events, but you don't get what happened in the future. So you need to have a time engine that's fairly creative. And that means basically what you need is a giant crafting game. Except for it's not the players that are doing the crafting. So you get a ton of, uh, of semi-unique crafting. And you get this chain of, well, object A leads to object B. And you combine that with object C to create object D. And these are things like uh, specific kinds of weapons or cities or cultures. And you basically can craft a specific kind of culture, tweak it to be as unique as you like, by changing the timeline. So if you want an America which is a, a theocracy, then you tweak certain events. If you want an America which has colonized Mars, you tweak certain events. And you can go into those timelines and you can equip yourself. You can take people from those timelines and carry them with you into other timelines. And so in one way, you can explore these timelines to try and find the best equipment. Or you can set up shop in some of these that you find particularly appealing and make a home in them. Uh, so, even though the gameplay is probably very similar to any other massively multiplayer game in terms of uh, mostly being basic combat combined with stupid fetch quests, the difference is that the fetch quests radically alter your world. The, uh, uh, there is some question as to how much the players are allowed to modify is the time stream built by the designers or is there some way that the players can build their own time stream? To some extent that depends on how good your crafting engine is. If your crafting engine is good enough to take a new event and merge it seamlessly into a culture um, or uh, another event or something similar. If your engine can do this, then you should by all means allow players to create their own events. How you do so is probably just a matter of picking out a type of event and then adding in the actors. Um, for example, uh, Jack goes to work. That's a short travel. And you put work on one side and Jack as the actor. And then if people want to go back in and change it, the game understands that this event here, this short travel, it's something that happens by car or train, and it relies on Jack waking up and a couple of other minor details. So a player could go in and fuss with it by, say, breaking Jack's alarm clock or his car, and he wouldn't be able to go to work. On the other hand, if Jack is going to Mars, that's a much longer distance to travel, and um, you're not going to be able to break that by simply turning off his alarm clock. That's, there's, there's too much too much riding on it, too much important stuff happening. So you'd actually have to go through a quest, uh, some kind of actual, probably a very combat-heavy quest. Anyhow, the core problem of this game um, is not, not the time travel so much as the crafting engine, the way which the computer understands events and can build a concrete result. Uh, it's basically impossible to do this by hand. You absolutely need to have an algorithm which can go through all of the players' events that they've turned on and off and output a coherent result. Obviously not every event is going to matter, but the result still has to be coherent. So, uh, to put this in perspective, if you were going to do this on your own, you would have to make a version of modern culture that is entirely based on Rome not falling, uh, or any other particular nation in history not falling. So you can't really do that. Uh, that's just too much work. And there is no team on the planet large enough to do that. Instead, you basically have to allow players to build timelines out of atomic events that they specify. They build event chains, which are more powerful. They build standalone events, which are weak, weaker, um, but maybe affect them more than other people. Uh, and by introducing these events 
and turning them on and off, they can customize their own personal reality to include the things they want it to include. And they can invite their friends over. Uh, sharing these is quite simple. You just tell a friend that he's, you know, you can toss him events. You tell him where to go and he will see that the event happens. Uh, the events would normally be hidden unless they were made public um, via some mechanic. So a lot of players will have private events that just don't matter to the average time traveler or the average time traveler misses them. Uh, for example, a very secret World War III event. Maybe a time traveler goes back in time and creates World War III, but he does it in an unusual way and nobody realizes that that can even exist. And since he's only modifying his own timeline, nobody else ever notices or ever realizes that World War III can be created in that way. And that may have a very, very different outcome than a World War III created by someone else in the same, in the same basic manner, but with a different event. This crafting engine is largely fictional, but it is not impossible. It's just very difficult. And that's basically why I don't have time to program it.